I'm going to talk a, a little bit about how Cochrane are implementing Risk of Bias 2, um, a few slides on that, and, um, and then I'll be talking about uh, what you need to be considering when you're drafting your protocol in terms of ROB2. So um, ROB2 is being implemented in Cochrane with a gradual supported rollout. Um, we appreciate that introducing ROB2 in Cochrane is a big change and there might be some teething problems along the way and this is why it's being piloted and supported over a longish time period. Um, so support for this is in the form of the ROB2 pilot scheme and this is for Cochrane review author teams and Cochrane review groups so managing editors, editors and other members of the CRGs who are interested and um, and just to say something that's quite important about um, risk of bias 2 in Cochrane is that publication of reviews using ROB2 can't be done in RevMan 5 um, but they can only be done in RevMan Web. So author teams intending to use Risk of Bias 2, you can publish your protocols in RevMan 5, but at some point you will need to switch over to RevMan Web. So the um, pilot has, uh, so Cochrane are running a Risk of Bias 2 pilot scheme, and it's the best place uh, for you to get support in either um, learning how to edit, um, protocols and reviews using Risk of Bias 2 or um, learning how to um, prepare your systematic reviews using Risk of Bias 2 for Cochrane. So the pilot has three main aims. It's to support the review teams as they use Risk of uh, Bias 2 for perhaps the first time and to support the editorial process by providing advice to CRG teams and editors to help them gain familiarity. And the third aim of the um, uh, pilot is for us to gather feedback um, in the methods unit to uh, inform the rollout of ROB2. So that's in developing support materials for CRGs and authors and to inform how ROB2 is presented and published in the in the Cochrane Library and um, how it's uh, implemented in RevMan Web as well. So if we go to the next slide, um, uh, here's a little bit more about um, the ROB2 pilot. So the focus of the pilot is on new reviews, so generally those in the protocol stage. And we recommend that teams come forward when putting together their protocol, but it's okay if the team is further down the process. Um, they can still join, you can still join the pilot. Typically, the process is a, a CRG will approach the pilot via their network associate editor. And when they receive their first, when they receive their first protocol or review using ROB2, and then the method support unit will provide comments and feedback to the CRG and author team on the risk of bias two methods in that protocol. So once that part is over, um, a kickoff call will be initiated. So these are usually an hour long and it's for the CRG team and the author team to talk to um, the method support unit, the implementation team and the RevMan web team. So it's um, an opportunity to ask questions about the process of using ROB2 in Cochrane and to get practical help and um, information about how to do that and also to ask about actually using the ROB2 tool uh, within your review as well. So there's methodological support too. And there's um, because the Revman developers come to that to that meeting, it's also um, important in terms of learning how to use Revman Web as well. Following this, um, there are monthly web clinics that the teams, uh, the CRG and the author teams can come to again to ask questions or um, share advice with other teams and get support. And so although ideally teams come forward at the protocol stage, the Risk of Bias 2 pilot is open to all reviews, whatever stage they're at. So um, can I have the next slide, please, Julian? So the second part of the ROB2 pilot that's important is that we're supporting um, CRG and editorial teams to, um, to provide comments, uh, editorial comments themselves on um, protocols and reviews using risk of bias too. 
So for subsequent protocols, editorial teams can draft their own comments and methods and feedback to the author teams and the method support unit will help them dra to draft those in the first instance and the aim is that quite quickly CRGs will have the knowledge to assess risk of bias to protocols themselves um, as time goes on and um, but they'll always have the option of asking for support if they need it. Um, but the idea is to get the CRGs happy with um, using, um, looking at protocols and reviews that are using risk of bias too. So, uh, so if we go to the next slide, that's fine. So at the moment, we're about halfway through engaging all CRGs in the pilot. We currently have 18 review teams involved across 16 CRGs. Um, all networks are represented in that in that group um, and there are more CRGs and review teams joining so once they've joined we'll have about we'll have 44 percent of CRGs in the pilot um, next slide um, so Review teams wishing to use Rob2, as I mentioned before, need to switch over to RevMan Web. Um, obviously, you can uh, start off in RevMan 5, but RevMan 5 won't, um, can, you cannot publish your review in re using RevMan 5. So, the time to switch over is after you've joined the pilot and before you start entering data. Um, and there's a lot of support in uh, how to use um, Revman Web on the Revman Web knowledge base. And I've put a link to it at the bottom of that slide there. So if we can go to the next slide, Julian. Um, here is an example of a forest plot that was created in Revman Web. And um, as you can see, it looks very similar to forest plots we see in Revman 5. The differences are that the risk of bias legend, as you can see there um, in the bottom left, if you click, Julian, a little ring should appear. Brilliant. So um, that's the legend and that includes the risk of bias two domains. And if you click again over there on the right hand side, you can see the, the judgments, but the, these judgments are results based. They are not study based, so they're individual for each um, forest plot that you're putting up. Um, so there's a webinar specifically on Revman Web and Risk of Bias 2 in this series. So how do you join the Risk of Bias 2 pilot? Um, if you're an author team, um, we'd ask you to contact your CRG. And if you are one of the editorial teams, then you can either contact your network associate editor or you can come directly to the method support unit. I've put a link there to the method support unit website. Um, so that was set up in 2019 and it's part of Cochrane. And it's available for all CRGs to answer questions about um, uh, methods in um, Cochrane systematic reviews. So now I'm going to talk about the aspects of risk of bias 2 you need to include in your protocol. Um, all of these slides, by the way, will be available afterwards. So if I go through them quickly, um, you'll be able to look at them after the talk's finished. So here's a list of the 18 headings covering methods in a Cochrane protocol. Um, next slide. And um, for Rob2 methods, we need to think about several sections of the protocol, not just the section that's headed up assessment of risk of bias. So some sections we think about because they will have implications for using Rob2. And in other sections of the methods, um, we need to think about those because Rob2 uh, is included in them. And this is uh, hasn't been the case um, often for other uh, iterations of the tool. Next slide. So the first um, part of the protocol where we have to be thinking about ROB2 is when you spec specify your study type. It's important to consider if you'll be including crossover RCTs or cluster RCTs. As we saw in the talk earlier, there are specific variations of the risk of bias tool that need to be used for these designs. So we are um, 
trying to be clear about encouraging authors to consider their study designs and the appropriate ROB2 variants they will need. Um, for the protocol section on assessment of risk of bias, there are eight methods items to report. And these are relevant to the specific set of studies you are planning to assess. I'm not going to talk through all of these, but the key ones are, for point two, um, you need to state which results you will assess. Usually this is in your summary of findings. These are um, results that you'll be presenting in your summary of findings table. And you need to give um, a little bit of detail here. So stating the precise outcome, how they'll be measured and the time point. For point three, you need to state in your protocol the effect of interest you're interested in, whether it's um, effect of assignment or the effect of adherence. For point four, you need to describe um, the, the variance of the, of the cluster and crossover RCTs. And you need to detail the process of doing ROB2, how many reviewers will assess bias if they're going to do it independently. And for point five, um, ROB2 generates a lot of data and we ask authors to present these in the final review. So it's important to state where you plan to store those data, for example, on publicly available storage websites such as um, Figshare. Next slide, please. Um, so in addition to the assessment of bias section, um, you need to be considering risk of bias too in the sections on data synthesis, heterogeneity, sensitivity analysis, and grading of the evidence. I haven't really got time to go into a lot of detail here, but um, uh, talking about your primary analysis, if you're planning to restrict your analysis to all those at low risk of bias, or if you're going to prepare a stratified analysis, um, if you're planning to look at risk of bias when you're considering heterogeneity in your results, and um, if you're, and it's important to make a note that uh, risk of bias will be um, uh, used to inform your grade process. Next slide, please. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge the um, Cochrane Central Executive Methods team and the Revman Web team who have been instrumental in helping to prepare these slides. And there are some links there through to the various different um, parts of uh, those teams. And I just wanted to say thank you to those.